Hello, everyone. Welcome to 2023 and a week with, joined by my friends, the incorrigible Luddite and Dr. Kelly. And I'm Jimmy Duster. Thanks for joining us. Been a while since we've done one of these. I think the last one we did was, what, early November. And then I took some time off for my Christmas band. And so it's good to see you guys. Good to get back together. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Push the little bell down there and you can be alerted anytime we post new videos. Uh, we got tonight's show is our sort of our recap of 2022. And we wanted to kind of leave this with an open, an open type of forum. And, um, you know, whether we want to talk about our favorite songs, favorite albums, you know, maybe just something we discovered in 22 that we didn't know before. So we're each going to take about 10 minutes here and, and just go through some stuff. Um, I'll start, if you guys don't mind. I was telling Dr. Kelly earlier that uh, I always like listening to what you guys have to say. So I'm going to start and uh, take some notes. So I organized mine into my three favorite albums of 2022. And then uh, I got some stuff that I discovered in 20, 2022 as well. Uh, my number three album... Uh, goes back to my my teenage years and uh, a band that um, was one of my favorites and then kind of, well, they were still making albums, but they kind of fell off the face of my earth. And, you know, that's the, the boys from Germany, the Scorpions, Rock Believer. Uh, of course, Klaus Meine, Rudolf Schenker, Matthias Jabs, Pavel Masewoda, and, and Mickey D on drums. Uh, it's it's a blend of a great blend of the harder rock stuff that you know the Scorpions have, have always done, as well as you know some of the softer, more melodic stuff in there. Um, when I lay my bones to rest off this album, I think it may be Matthias Jab's best guitar solo ever. Just an incredible solo. Klaus's vocals were very good on this, especially on some of the the more softer stuff. I really enjoyed it, his vocals on there. So if you haven't heard this, give it a listen. My number two album, another throwback album. Well, not really a throwback album because it's from 2022, but a band that you know just kind of fell off the face of the earth. And I was always a big uh, Jeff Tate fan uh, in the 80s and 90s. You know, he was always my favorite vocalist, and kind of refused to listen to this band since you know Jeff left the group. But uh, this album, I, I think it's the best thing they've done since the early 90s. Uh, maybe maybe even go as far back. I, I may even like this better than Empire, the more I listen to it. Um, maybe back as far as Operation Mindcrime. It may be their best since then. I think uh, Jeff Latore's vocals, I think he does a great job on vocals. He's not Jeff Tate. Um, he does sound a lot like Jeff Tate, but he, he just, just brings a... <coughs> I don't know if it's a you can say a youthful exuberance because I don't think he's much younger than the other guys, but I think maybe his just his writing seems fresher than kind of what Jeff had gone through there for a while, and you know they came out with that Operation Mind Crime Two album where they just it seemed like they all kind of phoned it in. So, but I think Jeff's brought some you know energy back to the group. And that's my number two album for 2022: Queens Reich, Digital Noise Alliance. Number one album is a band that um, I first discovered in 2022. And uh, so it actually goes on both my lists for my new discoveries. It's their 14th studio album. Uh, they're a band from Finland, Amorphous. This is their album, Halo. Just an incredible album. I love the way, and I, I haven't listened to much of their older stuff, but they, they kind of went from being sort of a death metal band into being more of a, a prog metal, folk metal type of band. There's a lot of use of orchestras, a lot of use of choirs on this. Just a, a great prog metal album. I would consider this a prog metal album. Another band, if you guys haven't heard them, check them out, Amorphous, one of my favorites from 2022. Um, couple of... Um, Honorable mentions, another discovery from 2022, Motionless and White. You guys familiar with them at all? Is that the one that has chaos on it? That's a great album. Uh, this is Scoring the End of the World. Yeah, with the song Chaos is on there, I believe. 
no, I think that was on an older album of theirs. I don't remember that from here. Yeah, I think that was on an older album. This is their 2022 release. Uh, and a couple other throwbacks I had from 2022 that uh, I really liked. Megadeth, The Sick, The Dead, and The Dying. I thought it was a great album. And Disturbed's new album. I was never really a big Disturbed fan, but I like this album, Divisive. I thought they did a really good job with this album coming back from their, their last couple of releases there. Uh, thought it turned out really good. Some other new bands that I discovered in 2022, in addition to Amorphous and Motionless and White, a band called Arion. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them at all. They are a Dutch, uh, you can't really say band, it's one guy, Arjun Anthony Lucas and, and friends kind of type of deal. Uh, they're, they're a very prog rock band from, like I said, from Dutch. It's All their albums are what can be described as metal operas, prog metal, prog rock, a lot of symphonic type stuff thrown in here. Um, he's got guest vocalists on every album. He plays guitar, bass, keyboards, you know, has some guest musicians that join him on this. So Arion, a great band to listen to. And then a couple super groups that I discovered in, in 2022 that I'm really enjoying. Flying Colors, prog rock super group with uh, Mike Portnoy on drums, Dave LaRue on bass, Neil Morris on keyboards and vocals, Casey McPherson on keyboards and guitar, and Steve Morris on guitar. Um, and another little harder edge, but also featuring Mike Portnoy, Sons of Apollo, another super group that I discovered in 2022 that I'm, I really enjoyed a lot. Mike Portnoy, Billy Sheehan on bass, Derek Sherinian, who for my money is one of the best keyboard players ever, uh, Jeff Scott Soto on vocals, and uh, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw on guitar. Bumblefoot? Bumblefoot. Yeah. Bumblefoot was in uh, Guns N' Roses. Yep, he was in Guns N' Roses. That's very, a, very good progressive metal stuff. If you guys are into that, worth a listen. It's pretty cool. So that's my list. You know, 2022 okay. was a, a kind of a year of discovery for me, and it was nice to go back and hear, you know, Scorpions and Queensryche and, you know, Megadeth and some of these bands that I used to listen to long ago that came out with just great recordings this year, as well as some of the new stuff I discovered. Yeah, Chaos was Hollywood Undead. I apologize. I looked it up because uh, similar type sounding bands, the two. I've seen Motionalized from like a couple of times. I like them a lot. Yeah, yeah they're a good band. I've uh, just recently got into them, obviously, and and uh, enjoyed this album a lot. So I thought they might be a little too death metal for my taste, but uh, they, they blend it well with some other styles in there, I think. So, All right, Shannon, what do you got for us? All right, so we'll start with the LPs because there's only four of those that I'm going to mention. Um, Ghost in Para, by far the best album of the year, regardless of what Jeff says, because he's just completely wrong. I even I forgot. I forgot it, I, I, we were talking before this started. I even forgot Hunter's Moon was on there because Hunter's Moon, the single, came out in 2021, actually. Um, and that was on uh, one of the new Halloween remakes and call me little sunshine well, i'll get to that in a second that's a great, that, that's a that was song. amazing I like that and um yeah spillways casarian it's all good and i so i'm cooking up people in the middle of my tv show in the background <laughs> laura you're on camera thanks for showing up for the 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 tv show so um so impaired number one by far um yeah i didn't even think it was close but then that was easy. Then there were three others that I thought really stood out. <laughs> Dor Dorothy's um, Gifts from the Holy Ghost um, with the songs like uh, Rest in Peace, Black Sheep, uh, What's Coming to Me, um, Love Dorothy Martin, Love Her Voice. Um, and then when I went to go see Dorothy headline back in the spring and like April, um, the opening act was a band called Classless Act. Um, and their album, Welcome to the Show, came out later in the year when I saw them open for them. They only had one song out. Um, but yeah, there's a song called This Is For You, which is just amazing. Um, there's a title track, with, which is a, is, which they are, which actually, This Is For You, they do with Justin Hawkins from Darkness. Um, and uh, 
then the title track is done with actually Vince Neil just singing some background vocals on it. And I know <laughs> Jeff loves Vince's voice. So, um, but it's a really good record. It's very upbeat, very positive. Um, the lead singer, I told him after the show in April, I said, you remind me a lot of, uh, not vocally of Mark Torian and the Bullet Boys, but on stage, very similar personalities. And then my honorable mention top three, outside the top three, just barely, is Hardcore Superstar in their album, Abracadabra, um, song on there called Dreams in Red, which is great. It was, um, my son actually loves that song too, and he's 18, so that's awesome. So then I'll just quickly jump over to my three best songs of the year. Just What's a second. That? Who, was, who was the third band you mentioned after Dorothy? Classless Act. Classless Act. Okay. Yeah. So jumping over to songs, and I tried to pull songs that weren't on any of these albums, but I couldn't do it because Call Me Little Sunshine, again, I think is the best song of the year by Ghost. Hey, um, that's the song I like by them, so I'll get to that. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, it was my number one song that was played on my Spotify last year. Um, and I told that everybody before we got started, I listened to a lot of music. I walked with my dog over a thousand kilometers last year, measured kilometers, and I listen to music when I'm out walking the dog. So I listen to a lot of music um, and at 20 minute miles and you can do the math. It's a lot of music. Um, the, my second favorite song of the year, which it just kept growing on me and growing on me is a song called Church Burns by Zeal and Ardor which is another Swiss band kind of combining metal with gospel. And it's really cool. It's really heavy. Um, what's the name of that band? If you, what's that? What's the name of that band? Zeal and Ardor. Um, if you listen to it, the lyrics, it's really dark stuff. Um, but it's, it's, just was a, it's just a great song. Um, saw them on Rock on the Range a few years ago. Absolutely fell in love with them. Um, because a lot of gospel influenced metal, which is just a weird thing. Um, and then my my to round out my top three songs of the year is a song called "The Ballad of Misspent Youth." is from a guy named Tuck Smith and his band, The Restless Hearts. Um, this is the only U.S. Album, U.S. guy that made my top three um, out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, apparently, there's a full album that got shelved a couple years ago and hasn't come out, but this song came out last year. Um, really, really good. Honorable mentions of songs. I'll just touch on them and then pass it off to Jeff here real quickly. Um, in no particular order, um, the next one, two, three, four, the next five in no particular order, uh, Believe, going back to 90s metal with Dope. Their, their song Believe is great. Um, a song called Drive by the 69 Eyes. Um, love that song. More mainstream, um, Neurotic by Three Days Grace. Um, Lucas Rossi is also singing on that song. He was on like Rockstar Supernova or something like that. Um, Natural Born Killer um, by Highly Suspect. Again, in, in my top 11 is what I came up with songs wise. Um, and then some, um, well, Steeple by Hailstorm, another song that was super heavy in my playlist last year on Spotify, uh, a lot of women lead singers because they're just absolutely phenomenal. And then going back, um, getting back into my youth a little bit, um, Live and Let Die by Storacci. That's Mark Storacci, who was the lead singer of Crocus. Um, oh. It's a great song. Um, I, can, I, I do update my 2023 playlist. I'll take stuff out that I don't like as much and leave stuff in. And that song just stayed there and stayed there and stayed there. And I never seemed to skip it so um had to bring that out um your own worst enemy enemy by john karabi who was the replacement singer for vince neal and motley crew and then the final one um the mm -hmm. gang's all here he by Europe for a while too no no karabi was in rat for a while playing rhythm guitar he was in okay. the scream before motley crew um yeah so i don't believe he was in europe um and then the last one was The Gang's All Here by Skid Row, who I think is on their fourth or fifth lead singer since Sebastian Bach. Um, they've got um, this dude named Eric. It's a great song. He's got a great voice. Um, so, yeah, that, those are the shout outs that I'd like to give. Um, just kind of all over the place. But, yeah, a lot of stuff there. I have listened to Rock Believer by the Scorpions. I listened to that album a couple times when it came out. 
Um, it was a little too mellow for me, and I'll just be the first one to admit, I didn't think there was necessarily anything wrong with it. Um, it just was a little too mellow for me. I broke down because you told me to listen to the Queens right because I was really still mad at them. I listened to it. I thought it was really good. I'm not going to listen to them again because I'm still mad. Um, and I know it's just personal. Did you listen to the Rebel Yell cover? Yeah. Yeah. And then um, the Disturbed album, I like a whole bunch too. I'll just I'll give you props there. I think it's a really good album. And I do think you're right. I think based upon the last couple albums, that's a, that's a circling back because of that whole new metal scene and stuff like that. Disturbed is by far my favorite. I love, love, love Disturbed. So there's I, a mouth, mouthful I, very quickly. Got some can good I ask stuff you guys out a there. question? I okay, because I, I did listen to the Queen's Reich record, most of it. Um, All three could, songs or four? I can't remember. I didn't really. It was jarring to me. Okay. Uh, the vocalist for Queensryche, he sounds like Bruce Dickinson to me. Am I missing something here? He sounds more like Bruce Dickinson yeah. than Jeff Tate. I can see that. Oh, he sounds a lot like Bruce Dickinson. His whole kind of delivery, it's just something. The music was really good, but it was quite, and I think Mind Crime is an incredible record. Empire is a good record. Yeah. This just didn't sound right to me. Yeah, so so the Queensryche album, what's really interesting too, is I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Latori plays all the drums on that as well. That vocalist sounds like... That yeah, because he's a he's a drummer, and uh, Scott DeGarmo's in a fight with the band now too, along with Jeff Tate. There's all these in fighting, because uh, Eddie Jackson and Michael Wilton, I think, are the only two left there. That that's that's that, that vocalist sounds like like a lot like Bruce Dickinson, totally, more more so than Tate. Weird. Yeah. Okay, am I up? I guess um, I'm going to list off what I listened to before I go into. It. I'm going to do this as with as much brevity as possible. But here are the albums that I listened to, okay? I listened to the album by the Yeah, Yeah, Yes. I believe it's called Cool It Down. I listened to I, parts of the Beyonce record, Renaissance. I listened to most of the Weekends record, Dawn FM. I listened to a little bit of the Tears for Fears record. Did not like that one at all. Uh, Sun's Signature, Elizabeth Fraser uh, of the Cocteau Twins with some help from uh, none other than Steve Hackett of Genesis. Uh, Envy of None, Alex Lifeson's new project. Um, I listened to about half the Ghost record. My apologies, Shannon and Jim. I thought I listened, I thought it was an EP, but somehow I saw five songs by Ghost. I listened to all five of the songs by Ghost. I thought four of them were extremely mediocre. Well, great musicianship, I'll give you that, but very formulaic, almost too polished sounding for my taste. Except for the one song, uh, "Little Miss Sunshine," or was that what it was called? Little that that song was fantastic. I really like that one. Um, I listened to Queensrÿche, most of it. Didn't really care for it. I didn't like the vocals. I listened to King's X. It didn't do anything for me. No, I think the King's X is really good too. I didn't. I listened to the Smile. Okay, you knew I was going to listen to the Smile. That's Johnny Greenwood and Tom York from Radiohead. Um, who? Radiohead. Who? Radio Head. Never heard of him. Really? <laughs> or should I just go suck? Which one would you I'm prefer? I've heard of him. <laughs> Come on, that's like, whether you like him or not, you cannot deny the fact they're the most important post-Nirvana act there is. You don't have to like them, but you can't Who's just... Who's Nirvana? Them. Oh, you're in Seattle. You're talking about that local band. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. That was the uh, Foo Fighters. That was the, that was the Foo Fighters side project, Nirvana, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Boris, un, un, unlistenable to me. Um, Voivod. More about that one later. Beach House, the biggest disappointment. That kind of dream pop has been done much better in the past. That was my first time listening to Beach House. Did nothing for me. Sonic Youth. That one was also disappointing. That was like a bunch of outtakes and demos. It didn't do much for me. Um, the Mountain Goats. The worst thing. I just 
I, I could I could like do like two or three songs and the the, the, the guy's voice just I couldn't do uh, it. Who are the mountain goats? Have I missed something? Is this like a known I, band? I don't want any mountain goats people to come after me or anything because I don't know anything about them, but I saw that a long time ago uh the the, the main leader of the mountain goats did a cover of spellbound okay so i saw it and i i was curious about it and he didn't mention the name of the guitar player he just compared the guitar player to jimmy page because that guitar player is compared to jimmy page or has been okay so he said why well, you know i i i watched the performance and the, that guitar player is john the geoc he's nothing like jimmy page by the way um but it was just not a good performance of Spellbound. It was a just not good. The it, triumph it, song, it, Spellbound. Is what song? Triumph. No, that's what I thought it was too. I have no idea what that song is. Yeah, come on, guys. I know Triumph, Spellbound. The one that was know. used. The one that was used on Strange. The one that was used on Strange. The one that was used on Stranger Things. Huh? Uh, when you said McGeeach, I figured it must have been a Susie song. Yeah, Susie and the Banshees, which he's on Stranger Things, whatnot. Anyway. Oh, that's the one on Stranger Things? Yeah, right. It's on Juju. You heard it. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, it, not a good cover. So I decided to listen to their music, an album. And I, I can't get over his voice. Uh, I hate to say it. Lastly, The Cult, Under the Midnight Sun. So I'm going to give you my top five real quick with... Uh, being as brief as possible i'm going to give you my three favorite singles and my two favorite new discoveries top five here we go surprise 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 number five for me is going to be the cult under the midnight sun uh not as good as love of course this is a classic with seashell sanctuary and rain and this is the best cult record don't ever forget it um electric's very good sonic temple is very good all the other ones are kind of mediocre for me, but I have heard uh, their first record, which is Dreamtime. Uh, that's definitely more of a post-punk kind of a record. Uh, I like this better than Dreamtime. I definitely liked it better than Ceremony. I liked it better than the self-titled with the uh, Black Ram on it from 94. You know, Black Ram, Pagan, Mystique. That's the cult, you know. Um, so I thought it was great. Ian Asbury sounded fantastic. Billy Duffy's guitar textures were great. Uh, three great songs on this, Vendetta X, Knife Through Butterfly Heart, which had some really nice poetry from Ian. And my favorite, Impermanence, which is the closest sounding to something off Love, which is their most psychedelic and atmospheric record. I thought this was a really solid record, better than about half the cult records I've heard. Not as good as Love, Electric, or Sonic Temple, but better than the other three that I've heard. Very good record, 8 out of 10. Number four. You would have asked me earlier on, I would have said it probably would have been number two, but it dropped. Envy of None. Uh, Self-titled title, Envy of None. This is Alex Lifeson's project from Rush. Um, very good record. And definitely like it better than a lot of Rush records. Like it better than Fly By Night. Like it better than Caress of Steel. Like it much better than Debut. Like it better than Roll the Bones. Like it better than counterparts. About even keel with 2112. So it's like an 8 out of 10 for me. It's a really strong record. Uh, and he's doing something different. A lot of electronic elements, a lot of trip hop elements. The vocalist, Maya Wynn, is outstanding. Uh, totally, she's very similar to, uh, I don't know her last name. Uh, is it Mickey Berendel, I believe? Or, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm not sure. Mickey from Lush. It was a very important shoegaze group from the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, had a lot of total similarities with her. This record for me was an 8 out of 10. It opens up really strong with Never Said I Love You, which is has kind of a garbage kind of a bounce to it. I think people like garbage would like this song. Um, the best song on the record, there was a third song, and it's called Look Inside. There's a video for it. I'm not super high on the video, but that is a great song. It's actually one of my three favorite songs of the year. More on that later. Uh, it's very moody, it's very atmospheric, slow, lugubrious, uh, ominous, with beautiful vocals from Mickey. Uh, 
nice electronic textures from Alex and uh, I think it's the guy from Cody Hatches in the band. Uh, the guitars just it just serves as texture in the song. Really subaquatic song. It sounds like you're underwater. Uh, beautiful vocals. I love that song. Look inside. That song was a ten out of ten. One of my favorite songs of the year. Uh, lastly, Enemy, one of the last tracks on the record, uh, has a nice sinister feel to the instrumentation. Overall, I thought it was a nice change of pace for Alex Lifeson. Glad to see he's, he's doing something creative. Mickey is uh, an outstanding young vocalist. I give this record an 8 out of 10. You have to give right. that one another listen. I didn't care for that one too much. Well, you agree with the guy from the Prog yes. channel, but I think it's really good. Do yeah, I, think yeah. it, I, I think there were like a lot of good to mediocre songs. In three songs, the three that I mentioned, particularly Look Inside, that were absolute standouts. And there were a couple tracks on the record that weren't great, that weren't even average. But I liked about two-thirds of it, and I thought three of the songs were great. So I give it an 8 out of 10. I'll check out those songs. Let's check it out uh, again. Look, Look Inside is the one that I like the most. Okay. And it's just – it is really – it's – it's a visual. I tend to like visual music. It's a very visual song, very subaquatic. Okay, bubbling, gurgling, beautiful, actually. Okay, those records are both they added ten. We get into the three big hitters here. Okay, my number three. This was close between the final three. Really close. All right, but my number three is going to be the smile which is a super group with Johnny Greenwood and Tom York of a band called Radiohead, Dr. Kelly. No idea. I, I know you don't. Uh, without any question, the most important band from 1995 onward. It's not even, you don't, you don't have to like Radiohead, but you, you cannot denounce or, uh, you, know, you, you can't denounce their importance culturally. Uh, they're the greatest art rock band in terms of popularity and mystique since Pink Floyd. They kind of took the mantle from Pink Floyd. They don't sound anything like them, but they have elements of earlier Pink Floyd in their music, tar Dark Side and Before, not anything later. Uh, a lot of they have you know, trip hop elements, electronic elements, elements from bands like Kraftwerk and Can, Krautrock, right? Take all this together, meld it into this lugubrious and cinematic cocktail that takes our fears and our dreads to the bank for them. They make very beautiful cinematic music. They make chaos beautiful. If John Jacques Rousseau, the philosopher, was a musician, he would have been Radiohead. Okay. My number three is The Smile. This is Radiohead's Kid A. I don't have The Smile. This is uh, from 2001. That's my favorite Radiohead album. Uh, it lost out an album of the year to Steely Dan and the Grammys that year, just to let you know. So you might have been happy about that, Jimmy. But I <laughs> just get anyway. Uh, this is my favorite Radiohead record, probably one of my 20 favorite records of all time. It's the only thing I have by Radiohead on vinyl. Let's get to the smile, though. Uh, they convened uh, during the during the pandemic because Johnny was bored. And Johnny is the great musician in that band. He's I wouldn't say like a poor man's prince. He does a lot of different things. He's very good with strings. Poor man's prince wasn't a good way to put it. Um, he's a great musician. He's kind of like Getty Lee in a lot of ways too. You know, he's multitasking, doing things at the same time, right? Bows the guitar, you know, playing the piano with his guitar neck. Uh, whatever it takes, doing strings, bass, keyboards, sequencers. All purpose. So Tom's also doing everything on the album as well. And then the drummer is not from Radiohead. Um, it did sound like a Radiohead album. How could it not? It's Tom York's voice. But I thought there were really four standout songs in this record. Uh, the Same, which is the opening track of the record, I believe. It's a mysterious dose of synth-driven magic. I uh, thought it was fantastic. Uh, the Opposite, uh, guitar-driven. Uh, very guitar driven. There's some very guitar driven stuff on this. It's part funk, part jazz, and part prog. And yes, Radiohead has a lot of progressive elements in their music and a lot of jazz elements as well. Uh, Thin Thing, the other standout, uh, just a class Johnny uh, Greenwood guitar piece. 
three dimensional sounding visual feels like you're caught in a spiral. Okay. Lastly, my favorite song in the record, Open the Floodgates. Uh, it's kind of back to the serene, classic Radiohead melancholy. Uh, you can see the sparkles in the air when you listen to the song. Beautiful guitar, beautiful piano. It'll sweep you away like Radiohead has a tendency to do if you feel what they do. And I certainly am one who's always felt their music. Uh, I put it at number three, though, because uh, it, it had some moments where it kind of dragged a little bit. Okay, uh, Maybe they were a little bit over the top. But it was a strong record. I probably there were definitely four Radiohead albums that are better. OK Computer, Kid A, the one I showed you, uh, also in Rainbows, which is a classic, and the, the latest one, A Moon Shaped Pool. But I did like this one better than the first two. Never liked the first very much. I liked it more than the Bins. Uh, I liked it a bit more than Amnesiac. So nine out of ten, great record. Number two, I hope you like this, Doctor Kelly, because I thought it was a great record and i couldn't believe how much i liked it never heard anything by them before it was the only album that i listened to i listened to the weekend record which is a conceptual record but it didn't feel conceptual this one felt conceptual voivod synchro anarchy fabulous record clock set at number two uh when i heard it I don't have any Voivod music. I don't know anything about Voivod other than they covered a Pink Floyd song, Astron Astronomy Domini, which was Sid Barrett era, okay? Back in 1989, I liked their cover. I never bothered to listen to any of their stuff. This is not a typical thrash band, all right? This is a progressive, highly technical thrash band that happens to sound raw when they present their material, which is really hard to sound technical and be technical yet sound raw and visceral at the same time they somehow managed to do it which is great it might be the vocalist his name is snake not pliskin snake all right this guy sounds like he went to the johnny rotten school of vocalists he has a very punk rock delivery and it works incredibly with the music astounding um it reminded me of two things when I heard it, okay? Reminded me a bit of Megadeth, Rust in Peace, because it's a very technical record, uh, but it's a thrash record. Doesn't feel quite as polished as this one, and the guitar solos are not, are not as lengthy as those of Marty Friedman. Keep checking Marty Friedman, Dr. Kelly. All right? Uh, it also, even more so, Remind me of King Crimson Red, all right? Uh, you can hear a lot of elements of King Crimson Red on this album. It's heavier. It, in the heaviness quotient, it kind of fits somewhere in between Red and Rust in Peace. Heavier th than Red, not as heavy as Rust in Peace, has elements of both, more King Crimson. You can hear Robert Fripp's guitar tones, definitely influenced their guitar player. Uh, the whole album felt uh, apocalyptic to me and it felt conceptual even though i don't think it's conceptual conceptual but let's listen to this the, the the album song titles on here uh just where hold on one second i got my notes i got my notes i got my notes somewhere i wrote all this down jeff here we go. Up our 30 minute time limit on his diatribe here no to no, no 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 synchro synchro anarchy uh Paranormalium, Synchro Anarchy, Planet Eaters, Mind Clock, Sleeves Off, Holographic Thinking, The World Today, Quest for Nothing, and Memory Failure. Whole thing was unapologetically bleak and dystopian. Apparently in the past, they had a record called Killing Technology back in 1987, so perhaps they're quite prophetic. But it's a great record, 9 out of 10, okay? Number one, Sun's Signature, uh, which is Elizabeth Fraser of the Cocteau Twins, uh, vocally with a little help from none other than Steve Hackett of the early Genesis, Wind and Weathering, 1977 and before. Fabulous record. I put this at number one because it was the most beautiful record and it was the best vocal performances of anyone that I listened to. 
She has Sun's a boss signature. Sun's signature with a S U N apostrophe S signature. Uh, Elizabeth Fraser's new, new project. Um, I, she got some help from her partner. Uh, I think his name might be Damon Reese. I have to check that. I'm not sure if I got that right or not. But Steve Hackett plays guitar on three tracks. And uh, on. those tracks are Underwater. Golden Air, which is probably the best guitar piece of the record. And also make lovely the day make lovely the day which has some beautiful spanish guitar from steve hackett her voice is in fine form on this she sounds fantastic uh as great of a vocal performance as we get from um maya on the envy of none record you know uh, elizabeth fraser is still the queen of dream pop okay she invented it more or less uh borrowing from both Susie sue and kate bush ended up doing her own thing with it she invented it. She still sounds the best. This is a great record. Um, only five songs. It is an EP. I loved all of them. I'll give it a nine out of ten. And that is my top five albums. Uh, very quickly, uh, top three singles. Number uh, no real order here, but I'm going with "Look Inside" from Envy of None. I think that's a great song, Jim, and I think you need to listen to that one. Uh, there's a video for it. I didn't care for the video, but I love the song and the subaquatic feel of it. Also, uh, give it a little bit of love uh, to the weekend here. I listened to the record. I know it's a concept album, Dawn FM. Uh, it didn't work for me as an album listen, but there are a couple tremendous singles early in the record. Uh, Take My Breath and Sacrifice are both great singles. Uh, I still prefer the weekend's first record, uh, House of Balloons. That's my favorite with the House of Balloons uh, Glass Table Girl sample. He's great working around a sample and riffing off of it and doing his own thing. Um, but those are my top three singles of the year. Um, yeah, Take My Breath, Sacrifice, and The Envy of None, Look Inside. Best new albums I've heard, though, without any question. Um, Hissing of Summer Lawns, Joni Mitchell. Uh, this is the best thing I listened to all year. Great album, yeah. Of, yeah, and things an 11 out of 10. Uh, favorite Joni Mitchell album I've ever heard. Liked it more than Blue. Liked it more than Hegira, which follows it. Uh, this one is experimental, not as experimental as Hegira. It's kind of like right in between Court and Spark and Hijira. It feels really spontaneous. Uh, her vocals are incredible. The guitar work is incredible. It's kind of jazzy. It's kind of poppy, a little bit of rock. It's just a must listen. I think it's an 11 out of 10. And the other one uh, I mentioned back in the 1972 episode, uh, probably the second best record I heard all year, including the new one from 2022, Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. 10 out of 10. Uh, incredible record, incredible percussion work, incredible guitar work. I love uh, Curtis Mayfield's voice. Sad that I discovered his work this late. That's my fault. Um, you know, you've got the Pusher Man, uh, well, Pusher Man, uh, Freddie's Dead in the title track. All the songs are great on here. Uh, give the slight edge, the very slight edge to uh, Hissing of Summer Lawns as my favorite record of the year with uh, Curtis Mayfield, Superfly, very close number two. And that's all I got. All right. Great. I want to give a quick shout out to the worst song of the year. Um, it's called Will of the People by Muse. Um, I don't think Muse. Take a listen to it and then just play uh, Marilyn Manson's Beautiful People. Will of the People, Will of the People, Beautiful People. Same damn song. Their Muse released a single, which I really like. I forget the title of it. Um, so when the new Muse came out, I decided to listen to the album. And the album's called Will of the People. And the Will of the People was the first song I listened to. And I'm like, I can't listen to this album. This is a terrible song. So there you go. Worst song of the year, Will of the People. It's a complete ripoff. Marilyn Manson should be getting royalties from it. Well, did thanks he, for joining did it, guys. Go ahead. Did he give him songwriting credit? No, he didn't write it. They're did, playing did, he, did he give the band songwriting? Did he give Marilyn Manson songwriting credit? No. Well, see, the weekend, for example, he gave Susan Ballion, John McGee. Like he gave whatever he gave her one songwriting credit when he did what he did on House of Balloons. So oh, that's, that's what you should do. Yeah. You give the artist songwriting credit. Yeah. So that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. That, Not it, good. Yeah, it's just a terrible song. It's it's this it's, it's, it's the same chorus. It's the same chorus. It's just amazingly bad. Well, thanks for joining, guys. I got uh, a lot of good stuff here. I need to 
get in and listen to off the stuff you guys mentioned. So I, I, for you, I would recommend. Uh, I, I actually think you would like the smile, Jim. I I know he wouldn't, but I think you might like the smile. Uh, but I know you would like the co- uh, not the cocktail. I almost said the cocktail twins. I know you would like Sun Signature. Pretty Sun sure Signature. about that. Yeah, I think you would like that one. And, I got uh, that written down. So. Envy of none. At least forgot listen to about that. Thanks for reminding me of that hailstorm album too. I forgot about that one, Shannon. Yeah. I did, yeah, I, I, I didn't particularly care for this one overall, but I really like that song. And only two Susie uh, references. That was good. Um, somewhere along the line, you said out. Somebody said I'll take demo. Um, I will throw it out since he talked about Susie. I'll just give um, Kiss a real quick shout out. They put out the 40th anniversary of Creatures of the Night. Um, and one of the songs on there is a demo for Not for the Innocent, which actually showed up on Lick It Up a year later. Um, but the demo, both Paul and Gene sing on the demo versus just Gene on the album. I actually think the demo is better. It's really, really cool. I liked it a lot. So there's well, your, your demo. I, I the like. references, I'm going to apologize real quick. Well, uh, when you, you mentioned Elizabeth Fraser, it's hard not to mention her. She used to have a tattoo of her on her arm when she first started out. Okay. That, true story. Okay, so, so that would be three now, and and the weekend also. So there you Four. go. No, those were I didn't say I didn't say anything. I didn't Five. Say, You're just talking about her. I'm being spontaneous. Did you ever see the Truman Show? <laughs> Was Radiohead in that one? What? <laughs> no, no one was in. Radiohead's it. terrible, dude. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, <laughs> hey, thanks for joining, everybody. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Hey, that, uh, if, the, if, the, if the wizard is watching, back me up on Radiohead, all right? With our favorites from 1973. Again, like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a great, great couple of weeks.